All right, so let's spend an afternoon with Google. That's what I call this. So today, here's what we're going to try and get through today, okay? We're going to try and get through Chrome, which is the browser that you're going to spend a lot of your time doing stuff on. We're going to try and get through Drive, which is the cloud storage piece, and we're going to try and get through Gmail. Now, we're not going to go through in that order because as I was going through this, I felt like it would make more sense to start with Chrome and then go to Gmail and then do Drive. That's so that's a lot of order. But to that end, today, I'm going to do my best to teach you things that are super useful, okay? While, while yes, I say to myself, this is the training I've always wanted to do, it's really not for me. It's for you guys. So if I start everything that I'm going to teach you, I am thinking is going to make life easier for you guys, not stress you out. Now, obviously, the learning process is always an energy in kind of event. So you will, you know, some of this stuff is going to seem like if I do this this way, it's more work now than it was before. But um, I think that once you get the hang of a newer thing, you'll find that it's actually a step in the right direction. Okay. All right. So let's start with that Chrome browser. All right. So let's do some vocab. Okay. When you first open a new Chrome browser window, and this will be true of any new tab you open to, these are the things you'll see. Okay. Now I, you're seeing me point like, see, look at that. Right. I'm sorry. Two, two screens going on at the same time. So up along the top there, rectangled in red, that's the tabs. You're going to hear me use that lingo and we're going to talk about tabs. Um, along the bottom underneath where you would type in the website, the URL, uh, and that's the language I would use. I would use URL, but some people just say like web address, right? Um, below that is all the bookmarks. We're going to talk about bookmarks too. Rectangled in green are your extensions. We're going to talk about those too. Okay. Now they're in purple. That's the account you're logged into. So given the, given the nature of your work, the fact that often enough you guys are working with students who have special needs and therefore communication about them sometimes comes with a heightened level of security, knowing which account you're logged into could be the difference between you seeing a document that was shared with you and not seeing a document because Tiffany might share something and she might put on it. You're only allowed to see this if you're a Waverly Schools person. And, G and your Gmail account, if you've got, you know, bevan.francis at gmail.com as your Google address or as your Gmail account, isn't going to know that that is also a Waverly account. If you're logged into the wrong account, you won't have access to that thing with the heightened level of security. And like I was saying before, you guys are working with a, a group of students who generally will have higher levels of security on them because of the types of conversations that happen around students with disabilities. So um, below that in orange is what we call the waffle. Okay. That's, and that's common language. That's something you usually, if you go out onto the internet, even type in the Google waffle, that's what we're talking about. That's not just cheeky Andrew language. Like it might be, if you hear me talk about the snowman or the stack of pancakes, right? That's cheeky Andrew language, but the waffle is what we call that. That's what it's called. Uh, and then um, down here in this uh, black box are, are your frequently visited websites, okay? So Google is going to try and be helpful. Even if you don't have any bookmarks or anything saved, if it notices that you spend a lot of time going to PowerSchool, it's going to throw a PowerSchool button right here because it's trying to say, oh, you only ever come to this to go to power these three, five, four, five websites. Would you like to go to one of those again? Okay. Okay. So that's the vocab. We've got tabs. We got bookmarks, we got extensions, we got the waffle, we got the spy here for your Google account, and then we got your frequently visited websites. Okay, now most of the other spots on here, most people are fairly familiar with, because if, if you have to go to a website, it's gonna be in this spot here. Technically, that's called the Omni bar, but no one ever says that. So we just call it the URL bar or the spot where you type the websites. That's totally fine. Cause there's really only one of those. Everybody knows what you're talking about. And then this is a Google, um, this is a Google search bar. You could do that. If you were to hit that little microphone right there, you could activate the speech to text. So I want to say a little bit more about tabs because I have the luxury of seeing lots and lots and lots of people's computers cause they show me them when they're struggling. Okay. And I want to warn you about tabs because if you look at the screen right now, this, I see this, I'm not making this up. I see this all the time. Okay. 
The top one is all right. But the top one, as you can see, we've got along the top, there's like, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 13 tabs, and the user is about ready to open a, a 14th. Okay. That's not that crazy, right? Because sometimes we got people that we do a lot of different things. All right. But that bottom one is about 25. Okay. We're getting to the place where we can't even see what the tab is anymore. And then that bottom one is like 50. And I will tell you, I made my computer do that to take that screen clip right there. And it didn't like it. Like it, my computer didn't like it. Like it slowed way down. Things started spinning. It didn't, it didn't like it. But the number of times I have seen this would, it surprises you because it's, there are even people who are very tech savvy, people who are very comfortable with the technology who still use their tabs this way. Okay. Now, I want you to keep in mind that each of those tabs, you know how the internet works in the sense that like when you visit websites, there's ads popping up and there's little runners that are running along the bottom and you've got flash things and, and all sorts of video clips that are running. Imagine doing that 50 times over. Okay. You got 50 different little video clips all running at the same time. Okay. That's going to take a toll on your computer's ability to work well. Okay, so I want to caution you against this because, and the only reason I bring it up is because I've seen it so many times and it's not something that you need to like feel, you know, bad about. Like it makes some sense. Typically when I say to people, and I try not to say things like this to people because that's not usually my role is not to be like a workflow coach, but like I'll, I just, I mean, I'm an extrovert and extroverts don't think in their heads. They think with their mouths, unfortunately. And so... I'll see it and I'll go, whoa, tabs like that or something like that. And then I'll explain stuff like, well, I keep all those tabs open because there's something in there that I need. And if I close it, I might not remember where I found it again or it was some attachment that I opened up for some email. And I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And the problem is that that person either does not have a workflow of what to do with a tab when they might need it again, but they don't necessarily need it right now. And, and, um, and then also other times, you know, they just, I almost think like they're afraid that if like, that's almost like their to-do list, like they're afraid if they close a tab, they'll also close whatever was in that tab straight out of their mind and forget all about it, which may be true. I'm not, I'm not judging anybody in the sense that that's not, and that's not a good way for them to do their work. What I am saying though, is that if you keep that number of tabs open, it's going to affect your computer's ability to run well. It's gonna slow your internet down. It, stuff's not gonna load easily or well. You'll start running into crashing and things like that. So it's better if we have a better plan for that. And that better plan for that is transition time. Bookmarks. Okay, there, I threaded those two things together with a philosophical thought flow. So, so bookmarks, all right? So bookmarks are for the things you need a lot, but you might not need right at the moment, okay? And a lot of people don't use their bookmarks, but bookmarks are a big deal. They're actually really, really useful, okay? So this is what I'm gonna suggest as an alternative to the workflow where you keep a lot of tabs open, okay? Because the bookmark means you can close a tab. The bookmark means you, if you bookmark something, knowing that you can get at it when you need it, you can close that tab and you don't have to keep it open anymore, okay? So tabs are the things that you actively need now, okay? And sometimes you do need more than one thing. Sometimes you're working in a Google Doc and you're, you also need your PowerSchool open and you've got a Google Meet that you're just about to click over into and you got your email open. Okay, multiple tabs, that's fine. But if you also have three attachments from handouts and you're a recipe you're making for dinner that night and an Amazon order that you're not, you just haven't been able to click go on because you want to double check that, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of stuff where if you keep it like that stuff, you could bookmark that stuff you could come back to later. And believe me, I'm a guy who does all that stuff. I, I do get it, recipes off the internet and keep them open so that I don't lose them. 
because I forgot what it was called and it looked really tasty. So I get it. So anyway, let me show you how this goes. Okay, so in that Chrome browser, next to, okay, so sort of, it's, it's right at the end of your URL bar where, you're, where you would type your website, you would see this little star, okay? So if we go back here in your Chrome browser, it, that star lives right there, okay? And if you click that star, this little dialog box pops up, okay? And that's how you add a bookmark, okay? So in your Chrome browser, you can create <laughs> folders where your bookmarks live. So you could have different folders. So you could have a recipes folder and you could have a work stuff folder. Or if you do math, if you do some math supports and you also do some reading supports, you could have a math folder and a reading folder. And you could put anything that has a URL, anything that you access through the Chrome browser can have a bookmark made for it. So for example, Let's suppose that you support three different teachers throughout the week, okay? And each of those teachers has a Google slide uh, schedule that they use as a template to show to, to, for their students and the schedule for the week. Rather than trying to either keep those tabs open or try and make sense of where they are in your Google Drive, you could just open it and bookmark it and then close it. So like at noon, you know that you're headed over to Ms. Paris's class or whatever, you would open up Ms. Paris's schedule and look at it and then you could close it because you don't need it open anymore. And then you're not gumming up your system with tabs that are trying to run things all the time, um, but taxing your ability to, um, for your computer's ability to run smoothly. Now, here's the, here's the big, the big reason I've, paying so much attention to your computer running smoothly is that Google Meet and Zoom and these types of virtual meetings are very taxing on your system, like very taxing. They're tough on your system. And so uh, you might give away 60% of your computer's processing power on a Google Meet. And so therefore, if you also have too many tabs open, you're going to find that your system's running slow. You're not hearing the things the kids are saying very well. It's transitioning slow when you're trying to share your screen. Like all of these things are going to become uh, issues if you're not focusing a little bit on making sure that you're not running too many tabs in your Chrome browser while you're also trying to do that stuff. So I'm a big fan of the bookmarks. And you can see, I'll give you an example here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and show you. Or no, no, I don't think I need to. Yeah, there we go. So this is my Waverly Chrome browser, okay? Because when in the position that I'm in, I've, I've got Google Drives in like six different school districts. And so I've got a different Chrome browser for each of the different ones. I've got a Waverly one and a Stockbridge one and a Dansville one and a Holt one and an Ingham one and whatever. So I keep some things up here saved that I would either need to get only sometimes, but it's hard for me to find or something that I need to use fairly regularly, um, but I don't always need to keep open. So like this, this one here, this is the Google Classroom approval process. When a new person wants to use their Google Classroom, like when I trained you guys on Google Classroom and some of you didn't have the ability to create a class, this is the button I was pushing, it was a bookmark, to get into our Google Admin console so that I could approve you guys. That's like an eight click process to go from my waffle to that folder. But I bookmark it because it's, I don't need, I can save myself eight clicks by bookmarking it. Okay, and the fact that I've had to go in there so many times this fall, that's eight clicks times about 30. That's real time, right? So G Scholar is another one. I have trouble working in G Scholar. I don't really have a lot of experience with it. So I bookmark it so it was easy for me to find. So if I wanted to bookmark this Google slide, though, I would just click this little bookmark this, right? I'd click that little star. And you notice it gives me the ability to edit this. So it's going to pick a name for it based on whatever it pulls from the website. But you can edit that. So if I don't want to call this an afternoon with Google, maybe I want to call this, you know, para 
professional support, number one, okay? And let's suppose that I'm going to make a whole folder just for my slide decks. Maybe I've got multiple slide decks I'm going to be using in the next week or two. And so I can make a whole folder. So if I push this, it's, it says what folder? Books, bookmark, bookmarks bar means it's just going to sit along. You can't see what I'm pointing at. It's going to sit along that gray space underneath the URL bar. Okay. But if I say choose another folder, now I can create a folder and I could have it say um, slide decks. All right. And then if I save it, you notice now it brings up a folder and I can click on that folder and my bookmarks will live there. So this is where you may find that for your various teachers, you've got some math sites you're going to have to keep at the ready, some reading sites you're going to have to keep at the ready, but you don't need them open all the time. I would consider bookmarking them so that you have quick access to them. Or if you've got other things that you know are all that you always need to use, but are hard for you to find, or, or you could save your, maybe not hard for you to find, but they could save you some clicks. So maybe Tiffany's got a form that you fill out, you know, every once a week. I don't know if she does or doesn't, but let's suppose she does. Okay. And it lives in your email and you always have to go find the email to go find the thing. And it's, you find that frustrating because it's five or six clicks to find this form and you got to do it so regularly. If you were to add that as a bookmark, now it saves you five or six clicks. It gives you just one click and now you're right there. And then you just got to remind yourself to do it. So anyway, all right. So that's bookmarks. Hi, Andrew. If I've got already a ton of bookmarks and yeah. I start making folders for it, I can just drop and drag. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh -huh. And if I wanted to drag this Waverly SharePoint bookmark into this folder, you can just click and hold on it and then drag it right on in there. That's the, the three... Um, dot, dot, dot tabs. Yep. Over here. So, yeah. So I would yep. need to open that to drag. If you've got stuff that's sort of like, like if you've got more bookmarks than show up. And so this maybe only has space for 15 bookmarks and you've got right. more than that. Then yeah, mm -hmm. you would need to go over here. So what, here's what she's saying folks, just for the record. So she's saying, that she's got a lot of bookmarks, more than can fit, which is a good thing. We like that. But it makes it kind of not as useful when you can't find the bookmarks that you have bookmarked, right? So when you go over here to the snowman, one of those options about midway down is the bookmarks option. And that will show you all of the bookmarks that you have in a one long list. And so even if they don't show up here, if you've saved them as a bookmark, they'll show up here. Then yes, you can drag these around here. You could put that one in a folder here. Mm -hmm. You could move them around. You can rearrange these as well. So if you've got a bunch of bookmarks, but you're like, man, I really wish that one was first. Like mm -hmm. you can choose the order that they show up in as well. Um, how can, can you just delete a bookmark that you have up in the... Um the bookmarks bar. Yeah. You sure can. So like this new tab with this SharePoint thing that doesn't appear to, I must have done it for an example and didn't do anything with it. Okay. If you right click on that or a two finger click, if you're on a Chromebook, yep. you right, fing, or right click on that and then click delete. It'll take that bookmark right on out of there. Got it. And that's important too, because sometimes maybe last year you needed a bookmark for a thing, but now your assignment has changed a little bit and now you don't need that thing anymore. Get it on out of there. You don't need it. Right. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> All right. So we've covered tabs. We've talked about the Chrome browser in general. We talk about tabs, talk about bookmarks. Now I would like for you to take a look at the extensions. Okay, now, if you are not using Chrome right now, then you may not know what to look at. I'll show you. Uh, so up in your Chrome browser, 
remember that this stuff over here, these are your extensions, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about what an extension is. You all have some, you all have some. So what extensions are, is extensions are things, this is gonna sound like the most useless definition ever, but go with me here. There are things that do things, okay? They, they, and there's no generic way for an extension to work. Some of them are links out to other applications. So like Screencastify or Kami are two examples of applications that sit as extensions in your Chrome browser. Others change the way that the Chrome browser works, okay? So like an ad blocker, for example, that's an extension. You can install an ad blocker extension and it'll block the ads from your Chrome browser. Uh, also grid view, right? Grid view for Google Meet is a way to change the way Google Meet works, okay? Others are extensions that change or that make Chromebook versions or Chrome versions of other apps. So like Bitmoji. Bitmoji is not a Chrome app. It's a, it's a mobile app. If you're a Bitmoji user. You had to go through your phone to get it. Okay. But then you can install the Bitmoji Chrome extension and you can start using Bitmoji on your Chrome as well. Same with Grammarly. Grammarly is another example, right? So the way that you find these things, if you just decide you want to add one, is you go to this website here. And I, you don't have to write it down. I have the slides. But so this is called the Chrome Web Store. And the Chrome Web Store is where you get extensions. You can also get other things there too. I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. But like there's a standard set of extensions that we push to all the Chromebooks. And they're extensions that have high educational value or high organizational value. Okay. I want to show you the puzzle piece. Okay. So up in your extensions bar here, there's a puzzle piece. It looks like that. And it usually sits, usually sits right here next to your icon that shows you which account you're logged into. Okay. And when you click on that, it's gonna almost look like the bookmarks bar looked like. It shows you all the extensions that are currently installed on your Chrome browser. And you notice that there's way more of them than are showing up here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them showing up here. And when I click on that puzzle piece, I see that there's some more of them. And if I wanted to, I could <coughs> pin any of the extensions to my bookmarks bar. And if I click that little push pin, you see how that little case showed up there? If I unclick it, it goes away. So I can choose the ones I wanna make visible because those maybe are the ones that I use regularly. And then there's others that maybe I only ever use every now and again. Like maybe you're not recording a lot of screencasts, okay? But maybe you'll record every now and again. So maybe you take Screencastify and you, will un you make that push pin white instead of instead of blue and that because you don't need to go up there and look at it all the time. Maybe Adobe Acrobat is one that I mean, you're happy that it works, but you don't ever have to actually use it. Right. So maybe you are, maybe you unpin that one. And part of it for me is that, and this is once again, this is just like Andrew Shaver workflow thinking here, but like, I don't like a ton of clutter. So for me, anything that's on my browser, anything that I'm looking at, all the time had better be useful for me to look at all the time or for me it counts as clutter and then i don't want to look at it anymore because i don't need to it's not i don't need like it's not like it's not like decorations on my christmas tree where i just want to see lots of different things like i i don't want that in my chrome browser okay so that's something that you can do now if you were to add an extension from the chrome web store the chances are it's going to start in that puzzle piece. It won't natively show up along this list when you add it, okay? It'll show up down here unchecked and you would have to add it. But that gives you a way to get rid of the ones that you don't use and don't wanna see without deleting them. Because if you delete them, it 
we push those out for a reason and somebody decided to push those out, not me necessarily. Um, but so I don't think the system necessarily, I don't think we want you deleting the ones you don't like. Although I do believe you have the ability to add the ones that you think might be useful. So, okay. So those are extensions. Are there any questions about that? You probably won't have to spend too awful much time up there, but. I was gonna say, what's their purpose? It depends on the tool. So for example, um, this one is office editing. I've never clicked on it, but that one has to do with your Google Drive. Learn platform. I think that's a PD site, but I have never clicked on it, so I don't know. Uh, read write, that's an accessibility tool. That's a tool that opens up a toolbar that gives students the ability to um, have all kinds of supports in terms of getting things read to them and highlighting and, and that kind of thing. This one is Cami. Cami is a PDF editor so that teachers can push documents and students can annotate over the top of them. This is Screencastify. Screencastify is a screen recorder so that you have the ability to like show somebody how to do something on your screen if you wanted to record a short video of that. Share to Classroom was a really cool thing and Google dis discontinued it. So that one is going to, we're going to end up taking that one off pretty soon. G Scholar is a surveillance tool that helps us keep track of kids when we can't see them. Nod is a Google Classroom tool, or excuse me, a Google uh, Meet tool that eventually will become obsolete because of all the Google Meet updates that are coming out in the next couple of weeks. So that's what those are all there for. Now I have an additional one. I have an ad blocker that I like because I don't like seeing all the ads uh, on my websites. That is not something that everybody chooses to use because ad blockers definitely do read all the data from all the websites that you show. So some people get uneasy with that. That's, they can, that's fine. Everybody makes their own decisions. I just don't like the ads because they slow my system down and I don't like looking at them. So, so I have added an ad blocker as well. And there's lots of different ad blockers. And I will say, just quick disclaimer, if you add an ad blocker, some websites won't let you use their website. So like, I'm not, I don't know if it's some journal, news journals, for example, Wall Street Journal or something. You might show up there to try and read an article with my ad blocker on and it'll say, hey, I can see you're using an ad blocker. You can't read this article unless you turn that ad blocker off because they're trying to draw their revenue from their ads. Mm -hmm. And so me reading their stuff for free is like me getting to not, it's like getting it for free. No one's supposed to get their content for free. Either you're, either, either you're letting us show you ads or you're paying for a subscription. And I'm like, I'm not doing either. So I'll mm -hmm. just have to get my news from someplace else. And then uh, Gmail, you go up to your waffle and it sits in your waffle, okay? Now, <clears throat> how many emails do you get a week, okay? How many emails do you get a week? And generally speaking, I am guessing, I'm guessing, I don't know your personal situation as far as the way your work goes, but I'm guessing that every single one of those emails can get filtered into one of three categories. Junk mail, which is like informational and ads and things like that uh, from services, people that have you on mailing lists and stuff. And then informational emails, which would be like some of the, some of the principals post like a Monday morning message or like a weekly review on Friday or stuff like that. Right. That's good. To, you know, that's not junk mail. That's good stuff to have, but you don't have to do anything with it other than read it. So I consider that informational. So you've got your junk, you got your informational, and then you got emails that create work for you, okay? The third category are emails that you're gonna have to do something because you got that email. So that would be like Tiffany sending you a form that, to fill out or a teacher saying, hey, can you review this thing real quick? Or we're making an update to a schedule. Can you, can you get on a Google Meet with me real quick and I'll explain it to you, stuff like that, okay? So you've got those three different categories. Now, when it comes to your email inbox, I would get in a habit if it were me, and it's not me, it's you, but if it were me, I would get in the habit of handling each email one time. As much as possible, handle that email one time. Just like I have seen people's 
Chrome tabs looking like that. I have seen people's email inboxes with hundreds of unread emails and just piled up. And I am telling you, you're not finding anything in there. Okay. So if it were me, here's what you want to explore. So first things first, over here to the, to the left, you have the ability to make folders over here that you can filter emails into. And I will show you just for the sake of showing you how I have to do this to survive my email from my, my work uh, at the ISD. So you can see these are all folders that I have that have, you can see multiple things in them. And I've got folders for different districts and I got folders for Waverly for the different events we've run and all the schools in those districts. I've got all the REMC stuff. I've got different systems and teams at the ISD. Like I get hundreds of emails a week and you guys may not, you guys may not get hundreds of emails a week, although you may. And so trying to figure out how we can keep it so that we just don't have all that stuff sitting in our inbox, not because clutter is bad and not because having a stuffed inbox is somehow wrong, but because at some point you're going to need those emails and how much time do you give away hunting through your inbox, trying to find the one thing you need, right? So when you get an email, click on it and open it up. Okay. Now you read it. This, this fellow here said, Hey, Andrew, there's a thing I need help with. Can you help? Okay. That's an email that's going to create work. Okay. Now for me, I would have a decision to make. Can I answer this email now and say, yeah, sure. And sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. And, or am I going to stick some sort of a reminder on it? Now, Outlook and Gmail are different in this regard in terms of how you do this. But you could star that. That's one thing you could do. You click star, and now it saves in this category underneath your inbox called starred. And it saves all your starred emails. So you could say to yourself, every time an email has in it a to-do list item, I'm just going to star it. And then I'm going to make myself a, a reminder on my phone or something to go and check all my starred emails. Okay. You also could add it to the tasks. So in Gmail, there's a tasks button here. And when you do that, it opens these up over here and there's a handy dandy little app that you can install on your phone that'll have tasks on it. So those tasks will follow you around all day if you don't do them. Huh, that'll be a way to get them done. There's, so there's a number of different ways that you can handle this, but ideally, when you would show up here, and maybe you get to check your email a couple times a day, when you show up here and there's five, six, seven emails, you'd be able to filter them. And maybe you have these folders set up by the teachers that you support, and then if those teachers send you emails, you just drag it right on over. Maybe that one's from Colt. Boom. And now all your emails from Colt sit in this folder. Okay, I don't get very many emails in my Waverly Gmail account. So maybe this isn't a great representation, but the same philosophy holds true here. So if I know that I'm, I'm, there's an ongoing conversation that I'm keeping track of over at the Wilson Talent Center, I can go and click on the Wilson Talent Center folder and it'll just bring up all the conversations that are just Wilson Talent Center. Or all, if I know I'm having a conversation with um, some teachers over at Elmwood, I could click on that and it'll just be all the conversations that are happening over at Elmwood. Okay, so this is, this is a way for me to keep my emails organized, but any email that you might need to keep from her because it's got a link you'll have to keep revisiting or it's got something that is going to come up and you're going to sit down and have a conversation with her about it or whatever, you could have a Tiffany folder and drag all those things on over there. And then they're not cluttering throughout the inbox. Have you ever had this experience where you go, I know it's in there. Hold on, hold on. I got to get my email. It's sitting in my email somewhere. How am I going to have to find it? Hold on. It's, uh, what day did you send it? What day did you send it? Right? That kind of question and answer back and forth. And that's partially because people just keep everything kind of sitting in their email inbox rather than filing that stuff. And it doesn't have to be done overnight. If you think to yourself, I can spend 10 minutes dragging emails a day for the next week, you'll file a ton of emails. And then 
it'll be easier because when you get five new emails, you just read them quick, move them on. There's a philosophy that I try to stick to. I'm not very good at it, but I try and stick to. It's called inbox zero. And that means that I literally shoot to have zero in emails in my inbox at the end of every day. And that means that everything that has come in, I have either responded to, turned into a to-do list item or deleted. That's it every day. And that way I don't lose anything. That way I don't lose track of anything. Um, I'll just show you quickly how to set these folders up. So what you would do is over here on the left, you'll see this button that says more. When you click on that, you notice your scroll bar got smaller. That means you can do some more scrolling. So if you go down here to create new label, this will show up on yours as well. Create new label and you click on that you can free type whatever this label you want. So we can, maybe this is the Tiffany folder and I'm gonna call it Tiffany folder and it'll sit up here with all the other um, homemade folders that I've made. And you see they go in alphabetical order. So Tiffany sits between tech and Winans. And then as folders or as emails come in, that's something then that I could just drag that right on over in, and you could do that with multiple too. So if she sends you a couple emails, you can just click the little checkbox, 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 and you drag three of them right on over there. So that I think would be a meaningful first step as far as keeping track of the emails that you have. So with Google Classroom specifically, there's ways that we can organize kind of yeah. what, what notifications you get. But with, um, with other things, you can't necessarily as easily. And so there's ways that you can create rules and stuff that say any email that comes from this thing, I want to auto route into this folder. Cause it might not be the kind of thing where you don't want to get those anymore. So maybe you really like that, that you get, maybe you're on a news list to some website, um, CNN.com and you want to get their daily push, but it always, it's just, it, you don't want it in your inbox. So maybe you create a folder where all those go automatically. And then when you're in the mood to read CNN news pushes, you could open that folder up and it'd be, they'd all be sitting there waiting for you as opposed to you having to sift through them in your inbox. I'm on like that. I've got a couple of, of um, like subscription services that I'm subscribed to and like one email in six probably are really, really useful. But in order to make sure I catch that one useful one, I got to read five useless ones and that's a little irritating but like it's that kind of stuff where if those were all sitting in a folder I can open that folder up and it's just when I'm in the when I have the time and I'm in the mood to to go through that journey and walk that path then I can do that then I don't have to do that according to their I can look at their emails on my terms not on their terms 